Hi, my name is uh, Rémi Artzi. I'm one of the three program officers of the Digital Strategy Fund. Welcome to this Facebook Live session. We're here to help you understand what the fund is for, how it can be used, and what it's all about. Hi, my name is Aliyah Cardarelli, and I'm also a program officer of the Digital Strategy Fund. By the end of this session, we really want you to be able to get to know what the fund is for, get examples of eligible types of activities, and know some very useful information before applying. Hemi, why don't you tell us how we're going to proceed? Yeah, so to get in touch uh, with us uh, uh, within this 30 minute session, write your question below in the comments section anytime during the Facebook Live. And if you see a comment or a question that you'd like us to address, simply like it and it'll boost it forward. After each main topic, we will uh, look for uh, questions. And uh, not all questions might be answered today, but we'll make sure to come back and answer them as much as possible after this session. So let's start with one of the big questions we get from the community, and that is, what is the Digital Strategy Fund about, and what is it for? So we recognize that society is, society is already being changed by digital, and the fund is there to support artists and arts organization in understanding the digital environment, to engage with it, and to respond to the cultural and social changes it produces. So the fund exists to help the art sector thrive in a digital environment and to support you to build collaborative and strategic approaches to digital change. Yes, in fact, as you're hearing, you may note that the fund is actually quite different from other programs at Canada Council. It does not support the creation, the exploration, or the regular programming of art. It's not a fund to support artistic practice, and it's also not a fund to support your ongoing regular activities. So what is the fund for? Why don't we discuss this next? So there are three areas of support that the fund can offer. So, uh, and here they are very simply put. The first one is digital literacy and intelligence. This component is for activities that will help you gain strategic knowledge about digital. The second one is public access to the arts and citizen engagement. It's the area of support for innovative ways to share the works of Canadian artists and to improve the discoverability in a digital landscape. The third one is transformation of organizational models. It's a third area to put forward new ways of working in the digital environment. So the fund is open to Canadian artists, groups, and arts organization, and to apply, you must have a validated profile on the Canada Council portal. Now, the digital transformation of the art sector is an ambitious objective, but how do you get there? Well, for success, we believe that it's very important to work together with others and with people that have expertise. Also, your strategy must benefit more than one person or organization, and it must be proposed by and for more than one artist or organization. Yes, and when you think about it, to, to be working in a digital environment is to work in a network because you cannot be digital on your own. You need to collaborate with others in order to succeed, and that is why the fund is asking you to work in partnership. Yes, in fact, you'll want to keep in mind that initiatives must be presented in a spirit of openness, sustainability, and a willingness to share the results and the learnings. The fund is your opportunity to take risks, to experiment, to learn, and to work together to digitally transform the art sector. All right, so now that we know a little bit more what the fund is, is there any question we might answer already? Well, let's see from the comment section if we have any questions so far. And now let's take a look at one of the questions we often have coming into us. And that is, um, if I don't have a profile, can I apply to the Digital Strategy Fund? Well, no, you really need a profile that's been validated in the uh, Canada Council portal. So if you don't have already a profile, you should be submitting one as soon as possible. This process can take up to 30 days. Thank you for that. And I think there's also another question that we have that comes up frequently, and that is, 
What is the difference between digital creation and a digital strategy? Well, think of strategy as if you were asking uh, a question about a potential problem in your sector. What is it that you're uh, facing that might be an issue, a challenge, or an opportunity, and you'd li like to explore and find potential solutions that are viable and sustainable? Okay, so we've touched on a few of the foundation values behind the fund. Now, let's share a little bit more about the three components of the fund itself. So, the three components are, again, uh, three areas of the fund meant to, to help you adapt to that digital world. So, you can use the fund to fill your knowledge gaps and learn about digital, to explore innovative ways to improve discoverability and sharing, and to explore new ways of working and collaborating outside of our typical analog processes. So essentially, what we want you to get from this is that the three components of the fund are practical ways to support the sector to go digital. Yes, and again, these are digital literacy and intelligence, public access to the arts and citizen engagement, and transformation of organizational models. And if you're not sure how to consider these components, you can think of them as an art, as building blocks from um, learning about digital to engaging with citizens using digital and finally to finding new ways of working as a digital organization. So now that we know what the three components of the fund are, let's dig a little deeper into the first component, digital literacy and intelligence. Remy, mm -hmm. so what does council mean by digital literacy? Well, you could ask yourself uh, first these questions. What skills and knowledge do I need to get strategic about digital? How do I find what I need to engage with the digital world? How can I develop knowledge and capacity in order to think strategically about digital? In fact, when you think about digital literacy, ask yourself, what do I need to learn? And who can help me find that answer? Why don't we look at some practical examples of what exactly this means so people can get an idea of digital literacy activities? Sure, so here are some concrete examples that I can quickly share with you. So first, you can use this component to gain knowledge. Think about group training on strategic issues, workshops, develop webinars, or organize hackathons. Second, you could use this component to gather and connect with peers and experts. So think about organizing meetups, symposia, forums, conferences. And you can also use this fund to research and experiment on innovative approach that will help you gain that strategic knowledge about digital. So I think this is a very good time to mention that uh, we have a new feature in the digital literacy component for quicker access to the fund this year. So through digital literacy, for initiatives under $50,000, we have an ongoing deadline this year. You can apply at any time whenever you're ready. This gives you a quicker access to the fund so that you can use the smaller grant to build your initiative with others, to test ideas, and to learn at your own rhythm. Remember, there is no deadline for this smaller grant amount, and you can apply whenever you are ready. Now, if you have questions about digital literacy, please put them in the comment section below and we will loop back and get to them in our next segment. Right now, we're just going to do a little bit of a touch base on the public access and citizen engagement. So let's, let's look at the second component. Remy, can you tell us a bit about the goals of public access and citizen engagement? So the goal for this component here is to increase the digital sharing and engagement with digital citizens. Again, to consider the kind of support you might get, ask yourself these questions. How can we improve the discoverability and the sharing of the arts in Canada in a digital age? And how can we, together as a sector, radically change our ways of engaging with the citizens? So, let's give you a clearer idea and explore some examples of new ways to engage with digital citizens. 
What do we mean by making the arts in Canada more findable online? So, the digital world offered great opportunities to be discovered beyond our current analog ways of dissemination. And as long as you're connected and in network, it is now possible in this digital world to be discovered by people who don't even know you exist. And you can achieve this through innovative use of metadata, open platform development, testing new ideas through prototyping, or even piloting projects with citizens. All right, so let's look at some questions that commonly come up about public access to citizen and citizen engagement. One thing we often encounter is a question about something like, is building a database considered public access? So if, if building a database is, uh, is the end goal, then no, it's not legible. You, you need to remember that the fund is not there to really to explore technologies, but more why are you exploring these technologies? So focus on the strategy and the long-term problem you're trying to solve. And this will lead to potential eligible activities. Okay, and another question we often receive is, I want to stream my performance. Is that considered public access and citizen engagement? Again, stream, streaming for the sake of streaming might not be eligible. It's really about why you're doing this. It's really like the question is, uh, what is the strategic problem you're trying to solve and who are who else in the sector might be able to contribute to solving that problem? Okay, so now that we've touched on a few common questions that we encounter Let's take a look at the third component of the fund and that is the transformation of digital of organizational models So we know that a lot of what we do is still very analog what does it mean to change how we work in a digital world? So our analog ways of working are not always aligned with the requirements of a fast changing and connected digital world. And so you could ask yourself how to work differently in a digital landscape. What will be the impact on our structures? What will it change? And what do we need to do to adapt to that digital environment? So once you have a sound understanding of your digital environment, once you share and engage with citizens digitally, you'll realize that these shifts will ultimately affect your work processes. So you'll need to adapt to new ways of working. This could include one, developing and exploring new work models, such as iterative development of organizational tools, or collaborative platforms. It might also mean implementing new governance or management approaches, such as new processes or workflows or digital frameworks. So now that we've touched on the third component of the fund, let's see if we have some questions about uh, the last component of the fund. Um, one of the questions that we often have is, how do we get a collaborative strategy if we only want to transform our organization? Well, that's a question we often get, and it touches on the, the, um, the need for collaboration. Start by asking who else in your community and within the sector might be facing the same challenges or issues, and uh, collaborate with them in attacking those potential problems towards a solution. And because you're adding one person or one group, you already have the start of a network. Okay, and another question we often receive is, oh, does updating our website count as transforming how we work? Mm, updating a, a website is not an eligible activities. Uh, you can refer to our guidelines for a more specific uh, list of uh, eligible activities. But again, it's more of a question of how might you think strategically of your online presence, and you could do that with others and uh, by solving uh, potential problems in the long-term vision. Okay, so now that we've covered the fund in some broad strokes and some examples of eligible activities for each of the three components, let's talk a little bit about the range of the grants available to applicants. Yes, so for public access to the arts and citizen engagement, and for the component transformation of organizational models, grant requests can be from $1,000 up to half a million dollars. 
And for digital literacy and intelligence, grants range from a thousand up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And and remember, for a digital literacy and intelligence initiative uh, with requests less than fifty thousand, you can apply anytime this year when you're ready. Okay, so we now know how much is available for the grant applicants. When is the deadline to apply for these initiatives? So the deadline for, um, for all components is uh, October 31st. And uh, the portal is open as of now, actually. Okay, and we just wanna loop back and remind you about the component within digital literacy and intelligence that for initiatives at $50,000 and under, it's an ongoing deadline. You can apply anytime this year, whenever you are ready. And we welcome you because the portal is open for that as well. Now, let's take a little bit of a look at the idea of assessment. Who is assessing these initiatives? So the decisions for these applications are based on recommendations of a committee of digital experts. The jury is not going to be assessing the artistic merit of applications. Instead, they're going to be assessing the strategic value of your initiative. Remember, the concept of collaboration is key. Now, the criteria, the main areas of assessment are going to be impact, relevance, and feasibility. You're going to want to take a look at our guidelines online for more details on each of these areas. And keep in mind that the questions on the application match the areas of assessment being evaluated. So let's talk about some resources we have available for everyone. Remy? Yeah, so we have resources for you guys uh, preparing applications and our team will be putting the link in the, in the comments section. So if you wanna have a better idea of what the fund has been supported uh, during our latest round, you can look on our website for the published list of successful applications and you'll find there uh, the types of activities along with their list of partners. You can also consult our uh, blog post on our website that provide seven tips to start being digital. Okay, so now is there anything that uh, we want to make sure that everybody remembers before we wrap this up? Oh yes, so think of being strategic, think long term, Talk to others and seek collaboration. Be open, share your knowledge, and uh, find some partners you could apply with. And don't forget, our new deadline is now is October 31st, and the digital literacy component has a smaller area of uh, grants under $50,000, and in that, you can apply it any time this year under the rolling deadline. Now, let's see if we can take a, a few more questions. Let's see what's come in before we wrap things up today. Um, we have Scott and he'd like to know, when we use the word digital, do you mean internet or does that also mean using digital technologies in real life? That is, that is a good question. Thanks, uh, Scott, for the question. Um, so think digital in the broad term, as we said in our uh, opening, as the changes that are occurring in society. Think of it as a network and how you might be changing uh, how you perceive that network and your place. Uh, so um, it, remember that it's not so much to focus on technology, but really on the strategy. Think, think not about what technology you might be using, but why are you using these technologies? Yes, in fact, you want to be thinking what is the problem or the the issue that I strategic issue that I want to solve and how am I going to go about doing it it's less about the technology and more about the strategy behind it so we'd like to thank everybody um, for attending today that about wraps up today's session um, and we would we're here to help you in the upcoming weeks we look forward to receiving your applications and we thank you very much for attending all right thanks